What's up, producers? Waves Factory strikes again with another easy to use but really, really powerful plugin, and it's called Equalizer. We're gonna be checking it out in this video. I'm gonna show you a great way to get started using it for your own production, and we're gonna figure out everything this plugin has to offer. It's all coming up, so let's get into it. This is Equalizer on the screen, and I'm just gonna go ahead and play it on the default. Everything is set to its default value, and I'm just gonna bypass the plugin on and off so you can hear what's going on with this plugin. And you'll also be able to see visually as well, which I love. Let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so there you go. That gives you all the information you should need to understand what this plugin does. If you're familiar with TrackSpacer, it's essentially that technology, but the evolution of it. It splits the audio that's coming in on 32 bands. Each one of those bands is listened to independently of the others and made, it makes a decision on how to equalize that particular band to make it sound good. I don't know if it's machine learning, algorithms, or just magic, but it seems to do a really good job. Now you can throw this on your master, a bus, or individual channels. It doesn't matter because it's only looking at one 32nd of the frequency spectrum at a time, making a decision based on that. There is a cool way to get started or how I would suggest to get started outside of the presets that are found right here. And that is just to get in and use the solo for the cut and the boost. So let's talk about what's happening. There's an amount knob here in the middle and you'll see as I increase it, you'll see the wave curve, the curve of the EQ get bigger and smaller, both into negative space and positive. Now, obviously, 100% is way out of control, but just to show you what's happening. From there, what I would do, right, is just set it at 50. I would leave the mid side control here, which will push it towards the mid. This will just be the mono audio or just the stereo field audio, but I'll leave that in the middle. I'll leave a, the mix at 100%, and the tilt EQ we'll talk about in a minute. I've got the out at zero dB, but then I have the automatic gain composition on. This is pretty important when you're EQing because as you cut or boost, the overall output gain will change a lot and it will change how you perceive the sound and may trick you. Uh, we've talked about it a million times on the channel, but uh, it's just called automatic gain compensation and most plugins that affect the audio in this way should have it. It's really great to see here in Equalizer. The way I would get started, right, is I would solo the cut and what when you do that, if we're at 50%, you will just hear the delta or the difference or what it's going to do to the audio, what it's going to remove in cuts case from the audio. So let's do that. So just listening there, right, it's going to remove all of that that you hear and it will change depending on how the amount of the, the big knob here, but you also have an amount for the cut as well. So lots of control there. And there's actually further control, which I'm gonna show you in a second. You can just use it as a tool like that. And instead of using equalizer to carve that space out, just hear what's going on. It's almost telling me those horns are too loud in its opinion. So I could go back into my mix and turn down those horns. Let's check out the boost. Using that solo feature to listen to the delta value is just gonna help you understand what's gonna be taken away or, or added or. Let 
increased. <laughs> I couldn't think of increased right then. Not only can you control the cut or boost amounts individually or the overall amount, but you can also control the individual 32 bands on whether or not they're gonna be boosted or cut. For example, if we come back to cut. I like those horns, let's say. I want them where they are. What I can do is come over here and just turn these down. So these are the individual 32 bands along the spectrum that we now have control over. So you see how I've said bypass those bands right there? Let those pass by, don't reduce those. I do like taming the harshness of the hi-hat and there is some muddiness down there at the bottom, but I mean, you don't have to bypass it by pulling it all the way down. You can say, hey, you know, let's, let's be a little more gentle with it. I think that's undeniably less boxy, less muddy. Uh, tell me what you think in the comments. And then we can do the same thing on the boost side. You know, 30 hertz below, we're really not that concerned. If we wanted to, we could also go the other way. We could say, hey, you know, up here, let's really push it up. You've got a lot of control over it. You don't have control, again, over what, like, what would be a match EQ where you have a frequency curve that you apply to your EQ. This is again, doing it on a band by band basis. So it's really different approach to it. And like I said, from the beginning of the video, it's getting really good results. So let me go ahead and try to dial this in real quick. And I might even bring bring these highs down even a little bit more. It's a better sounding mix. And this is just a really cool way to achieve it. As usual, I'll leave links to everything in the video description. And I'm Joshua Casper. I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video.